Hi there guys, we're back with Access 2010 we're going to be looking at some of the more advanced little features of uh, the actual sort and filter and also one more uh, area of the records uh, group that we see at the top here in our home tab. Right, so if we're going to be looking at our sorting and filtering, we could simply go ahead and maybe click on one of the actual data points, um, a record for instance, and go click on the advanced area. You'll see that certain things are grayed out and others aren't. If I had to go to advanced filter sort, you'll notice that I have the actual table pop up. I can see exactly which table I'm using. In this case, I've got or test 2 which is table 2 if I clicked on the test 1 or double clicked on it it'll go ahead and create another table over here now I don't really want anything in there but you'll note that when I click in this field property area I can actually go and change it to test 1 2 or 3 whichever field I really have which is also ID okay so in this case over here, I'm not going to change anything or filter a sort by as specifically as ascending. Um, I could do that and we could apply the actual filter, but I just thought I'd expose this fact to you. So if I close this by right clicking on that, it'll take me back to my table. All right, we spoke about toggle filter in the last video, your ascending and descending and selections. Okay, if we looked at our advanced area yet again, I could go and filter by. Now note that when I have selected certain areas, I can go to specific um, cells within my actual table and I can look at a drop down arrow and uh, filter by the number five. Um, in this case, yeah, I can then go ahead and filter by the word dog. And in this case, it'll pop up with all the actual uh, data from my table and on the 19th, okay. Um, you note, yeah, I also want that as a 2. So, yet again, I can save or close this. Okay, I'm going to close it, taking me back to my actual area. Um, looking more at the advanced re uh, sorting and filtering, I can apply the apply filter sort. Remember that this now takes us back to the toggle filter. Right, we can go ahead and use this. Uh, you'll note that test 2 has got a toggle filter applied to it because it's got the actual filter the little picture next to it. All right, I can undo the actual toggle filter and it'll bring back all the results in test 2 for me along with all the other things that are related to the ones that were hidden. Okay, let's go back to the advanced. I can clear all filters, which means anything that was in test 2. Remember, we had that filter over there. Uh, let's go and clear all the tests, all the, all the filters. Uh, you'll see that it now grays it out. So let's go back to apply filter sort, and it now does not have that little filter sign next to test two. Okay, so remember, if you want to revert to a specific filter that you've applied, um, you could always just go ahead and go and um, find that filter or revert to the actual toggle filter um, so that you can get that. Let's actually select the filter. Let's go and filter this by a, a cat. Say, okay, there we go. We have the actual um, little picture next to it. And now if I undo the toggle filter, you'll note that it's gone. All right, so let's go to advanced. I then say filter. There we go. It, it applies it to the actual test two. If I had to do it to test one, that little picture would be next to test one. Okay, if I click on toggle filter, it gives it back to me. Have a look at that. I've applied a specific filter, so it keeps it in memory for me. In advanced, I can clear those filters. Clear it. You'll see that my toggle filter disappears, and I don't have the option to go and revert back to the actual filter itself. All right. Um, I think that's basically it for filters now. Now let's get on to the actual records. If I had to just click anywhere yet again, I would like to go ahead and create a nice row where it's going to give me the totals. Click on totals. You'll note that a little word called total pops up. I can click in this area here and I can also have it count for me. If I say count, it comes up with a number seven. It's obviously got seven records inside of this field. So it gives me the number seven. In this case over here, I'm going to just say none. It'll take it back to the word total, and let's click on the next one. 
The drop down arrow over here says to me that I can actually go and sum every one of these uh, numbers. Remember, like you have in Excel, uh, you have a whole lot of functions in Excel that you can use. They, some of these will actually apply over here, the basic ones like sum, average, count, maximum and minimum, standard deviations and variances. So in this case here, I'm going to say sum and it automatically adds up for me what I need. In this case over here, remember I have letters, okay, it actually um, will see or use what I have. It will take into consideration the kind of formatting or data type that I've had in my design view. And in this case, I've got an option to count these. So it spits out number seven for me. Um, there are seven records over here. And over here, I can go ahead and go, well, which is my average date or count the, the number of dates. If I want to count it, yet again, it comes up with seven. If I want the average between that, this is the average date between these guys over here. If I had to go ahead and uh, filter this, let's quickly just move this over here. If I had to filter this column uh, to ascending, all right, none of these data types will change over here. It'll still give me the necessary information, yet I'll now be able to see that it would be, for instance, an average between the date of the 6th and the 22nd. Okay. So I think that's uh, going to explain exactly what we needed to do when we deal, dealt with the record or the total and the records group. Now, if I had to unselect the totals, let's see what happens. All of that disappears. Let's see if everything will come back if I do click on it again. All right, there it is. Remember, we have an unreadable section over here. Let's see if we can simply expand it. Yes, we can to make it readable. See what it does? It gives me the actual average in date and it gives me the average in time. Remember the format for this uh, column over here was date and time. Let's go look at our actual design view for test three. Test three, date and time. All right, guys, going back to data view, I need to actually, data sheet view, I need to save my changes if there were any made and I need to apply. Please remember that you right click and you save to save everything you've changed on this actual table within this database. I hope this helped you guys, and I hope you guys keep watching my videos. Thank you very much.